We're excited about what God's doing. It's miraculous that we're in this building at this time in this way. It's a good presence of the Lord. Pray for Pastor Jamel. He's down in Maryland in a church that he's never been in before. I said we'd be praying for him. But let me give you an update what's happening. Last week was a week of prayer, but at the same time, last Sunday, we started what's called the Daniel Fast, 21-day Daniel Fast. Basically, you eat fruits and vegetables, and let me just say this to you, no sweeteners, breads, meats, eggs. Come on, you're saving a lot of money by not eating eggs. The price of eggs is $499 per thing, but anyway, and, or dairy products. And so we're on the spiritual journey, and what we believe is that uh, that God will help set up the miraculous, not just in the moment, but throughout the whole year. And so tonight, if you're with us, we're halfway done. So we are now downhill. So now you can start talking about what you want to eat next, the Sunday, whatever, after church. Does anybody, I'm already starting to calculate. It has to be, have something with meat in it. But that's what's happening. After church, we do have some snacks for you. It's Daniel Fast approved. I think it's peanuts and water. So we'll get back to some type of normalcy after the, the next time. And by the way, if you say, I haven't participated, can I get on board? The answer would be yes. You could actually start like maybe tonight or tomorrow. We love for you to participate. It's the Daniel Fast. And so generally when you say Daniel Fast, you say you eat fruits and vegetables. For just a few moments, I want to talk to you about spiritual fruit in your life. This is a familiar portion of, 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 of Scripture, but talking about abiding or being close to the Lord on a regular basis. This is what Jesus said in John chapter 15. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. You're already a Christian. Remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you could do nothing. Let me just say this one more time. I say this to myself. Pastor John, Deacon Keith, anyone who runs a ministry or a small group or you're a church person, Jesus said, apart from him, you could do nothing. I think we need to be reminded in our souls that serving the Lord, producing fruit, doing ministry, encouraging, helping, helping the poor, doing more ministry around the world, missionaries in Newark or whatever, if we're not connected to the Lord, the Bible says we can do nothing. Unless we pray, unless we get around these altars, unless we're dependent upon God, we can do nothing. But if we do stay, remain together with the Lord, if we abide with him, like the prayer service, we'll have a lot of fruit and a lot of results. Yesterday for me was just an amazing day. I actually, it kind of came my way. There was a couple things, and I've been believing God by prayer. There was four prayer, I got four either emails or phone calls that of what I would say potential opportunities for either us as a church or for me saying, God, you really are in the middle of this because we're abiding with you. Now, if you just read this as an American, it might not get you, but when Jesus said, I am the vine, and if you have a little history of scripture, Jesus said seven times these I am statements. He said, I am the bread, I am the light of the world, I'm the door, the shepherd, the resurrection, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and I am the vine. This is number seven. For the Jewish hearers, that was something for them. That's a red flag. What you're doing is you're calling the Father, or you're making yourself equal to the Father. And Jesus did this all the time. Whenever he said, my Father, he's making himself equal with God. John chapter 10, verse 30, I am the Father, are one. And that's why they wanted to kill Jesus. Do you remember, and by the way, this is perfect timing for this message. If you're reading through the Bible in a year, we just started Exodus. Exodus is my favorite Old Testament book of the Bible. And they, God called Moses at the burning bush, and Moses had this question. What do the Israelites, if they asked me, what's your name? And, and Moses said, this is my name. I am that I am. 
He used these words, I am that I am. So Jesus now saying, I am the, like the vine. He's making himself equal with God and this divine connection with God. And what God is, what Jesus is telling us, he says, listen, when you connect with me, you're having a relationship with the creator of the universe. You're having a connection with Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit. There's no more intimate relationship. The great I am. So you say, well, what is God trying to do in our life? This is what it says. First, it, the activity of God, he's cutting off everything that, is not, that does not belong in our life. Pastor Adam, will you do me a favor? I have like um, a saw underneath there. I'm going to actually need your help with the two things. Leave the other thing there. Just that. Could you do that? Thank you so much. You did a great job, Pastor Adam. Jesus said, I'm going to cut off, or my father, excuse me, my father cuts off everything in me that does belong. You say, well, how does God work in your life? You know what he wants to do? He wants to cut off things that will keep you from being fruitful. What the Lord wants you to do is live a fruitful life. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If anything goes against it, what he's going to do is work by the Spirit, through conviction, through preaching, through music, or whatever, he's going to cut off some things that don't belong. You might even be under conviction right now. You might be sitting here, you know, there's some things I should just not be doing right now. You know what God wants to do by his Spirit? He's going to tell you that. These things hurt you. They're of the flesh. It lowers your commitment to God. You're probably not connected to God nearly as much, and he wants to get rid of them because he wants you to produce fruit in your life. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, says, if your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. And by the way, he's not speaking literally. There's actually been people in, in history that their eyes, their lust of their eyes or the pride of life, they would actually gorge out their eyes. No, he's saying, no, you got to cut out that which kind of brings you in the wrong direction. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Think about the strength of that word. God would rather you go to heaven with one arm spiritually cut off than for you to have your whole pleasure and die and go to hell. He's like, I'm going to work on you. And I'm going to cut off some things that don't belong for my glory and for fruitfulness. And by the way, listen. Let me just encourage you, during this kind of time, God will speak to you because you are intimate with God. Your flesh cries out. So my daughter, for dinner, she made some type of Daniel fasting with some beans and rice and whatever. You know what my, I said to myself? She goes, Dad, do you like it? I said, it needs sour cream. That was my first thought. It, it, my, my, fle my just natural kind of came like to my natural. But we're talking spiritual and supernatural. So that which doesn't belong in our life, God's not going to say, hey, it's okay. He's going to say, I'm going to cut that off in your life. Now, there's a second thing. It says this. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does, watch this. He goes, he goes, he prunes it so that it will be even more fruitful. Pastor Adam, you've been doing an amazing job. We didn't even practice this. Thank you. So this is like a saw, like the big things, obviously. So if you're killing people, God's probably going to want you to stop killing people. Or maybe you're lying. You have no problem lying. You know, you, you just kind of know that's wrong. I just, gotta, I, you know, I just start telling the truth. But what I really want to talk to you about today is a pruner. Jesus says, I also go into your life and prune you. Not the big things. The smaller things, and generally even stuff that nobody else knows about. It's just in your mind or your heart. God wants you to even be more fruitful. You say, I'm a Christian. I already have some fruits. Like, I have love. You know what God wants to do? He wants you to have more love. Maybe love for your enemies. God wants you to have more joy. Marlton, we're doing well. God wants us to do better. He wants us to have more fruit. He wants us to reach more people. And it's, it's very, very subtle when we allow God to come in and really start tweaking us on the small things like attitude, like being a person of 
thanksgiving or gratitude, issues of selfishness in our lives, unforgiveness, wanting to be first all the time. Some of us are, are so, and I, I, I'm almost preaching to myself, I'm so competitive, I have no problem if you're down kicking dirt on you in volleyball. I, the volleyball is like my bad thing. Like we're going to go do and my flesh is going to come out. There. This, these things are inside of us. All right, calm down. Did they win? Oh, yeah, they did win. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, I just, I didn't know. I don't, this wasn't planned either. All right, here we go right there. No, that, that is fine. Are you an Eagle fan? Yes? What are you? Oh, okay, sorry. Just ask it. <laughs> Somebody's not going to be happy on Sunday. So if I'm not here, that's what's going on. We play on Saturday, so. <laughs> I know. I know. It be, okay, so I, listen, I don't do it. Like, whatever. All right. <laughs> Help me out here. <laughs> Anything else on your heart? Yo. <laughs> All right, let's give me, all right, listen, I'm the pastor. Okay, anyway, I'm just joking. Somebody's not going to be happy. On Sunday, if you don't know, the Eagles play the Giants, and it's kind of, the Eagles are probably better, obviously, at this point, but it's all about who wins, right? So if the Eagles win, the worship is going to be great on Sunday morning, right? If the Giants win, uh-oh, I might not even show up, you know, but the Lord is still on the throne. But anyway. Thank you for, I'm not even sure. Let's just come to the altar right now. Anyway, <laughs> what happens is God begins to prune us, listen, so you can be even more fruitful. So you're a believer, and what the Lord wants us to do is produce fruit. But in 2023, he wants us even to be more fruitful, more mature, more godly, more holy. And there may be some things you never even thought about. God starts working on you during the week of prayer or the Daniel fast to say, listen, I, I'm going to take you a little bit deeper. I want you to be more mature. I want you to give more to missions. I, I, I'm going to take you to a deeper commitment with your eyes. Holiness. I want you to spend more time in prayer. I don't want you to waste as much time. You, like he might say to you, hey, I, you're a Christian. It's not because I don't love you. It's because I do love you. I want you to abide with me so close that you don't waste your time or energy. Most people live below the quality of what God really wants from them, And it's this pruning you say, well, what do I do with that? I think if you're really serious in your walk with the Lord, you can just actually pray that, Lord. Say, Lord, I really want that. Cut off anything in my life that doesn't belong. Don't let me get by with one thing. And don't let me say, God, don't let me say something's right that's wrong. If something's wrong, just say, God, it's wrong. If two people are living together in sin before marriage, just call it sin. Don't say, oh, we're in 2023 and everybody's doing it. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Don't make the preacher to be a bad guy. Just say, God, I'm not going to listen to something that's wrong. But when you're alone with the Lord and you're abiding and he begins to do a work inside of you. Like, for example, men, he might say something. I want you to love your wife more. And you say, yeah, but she always makes me late to church. <laughs> it's called Uber, guys. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just no you, you begin to have this thing. And what happens is you say, Lord, you know, you're right. I'm impatient sometimes. And I'm going to love my wife. It's little things. You get impatient with your kids. Nobody knows. No one sees it. But God says, you know what? I want you to love your kids like ways you never thought so. And it can be little things. like too, and It's just between you and God. This is the thing about even the public preaching. When God begins just to work in your life, it's between you and God. It could be something like, you know, I want you to keep the, the Sabbath day holy. You run around like you're a crazy person, like Sunday doesn't even matter to me. And all of a sudden, God gets, begins to deal with you, and he wants you to be more fruitful. I believe God wants me to be more fruitful, more mature, more godly, more effective, more effective in ministry. Because way before I was even born, you were born, the Bible says we are God's workmanship, creating Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. I don't want to miss out on that. I say, God, whatever you want from me. And whatever you ever want out of this fast for me, I just want to be sensitive. I want to be spirit-led. I want to have joy in my life. Yeah, there's all these problems around me. I'm just not going to get caught up in that. Lord, I want to be fruitful. And this is what happened with Daniel after they, we've read this now a couple weeks. Look at what it says in verse 17 of Daniel 1. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. 
In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in the whole kingdom. You say, can my life be more fruitful? Could it be ten times more fruitful? Oh, I hope and pray. So that's God's activity. He's cutting things out or he's pruning us. He's really pruning us. I, I invite you to let that pruning process. Like you go to the Lord, maybe prayer tomorrow. I don't know what time you get up and pray in the morning. I'm a morning guy. I, I don't know why I'm getting off in the flesh. But you know what I miss? I miss a cup of coffee in the morning. I'm sorry. I'm leading you right into temptation. But I'm a morning guy. That's where I feel like I hear the Lord best. I just kind of quiet before everybody gets up. And I, I was like, Lord, what are you trying to do in my life? If you'll listen to him, if you can be close to him, he'll speak to you. But now what's your, that's God's job. Now what's your re responsibility? It's this word called abide or remain. Eleven times in, in John chapter 15, the Bible says, abide with me. Like this continual, don't get disconnected. Some people, you just kind of come to church and that's your relationship with God. That's not what Jesus is talking about. He says, I want you to abide with me like every day. Abide, be with me, be with me. Don't get dis disconnected. When you're connected, you're fruit bearing. You're better, you're Christ-like. When you start disconnecting, I'm not trying to beat anybody up, but these last couple years, man, it just seems like everyone's all over the place. But what we should be doing is saying, Lord, no matter what happens in the world, we're going to abide with you and keep abiding, keep being with you. So it could be faithful church attendance, but it's daily devotions. It's, it's being there together. I saw a quote that said this, understanding what God is doing will never be as important as trusting what God is doing. And this is where faith comes in. Say, God, I don't understand all that you're doing in my life, but if I stay connected with you, if I abide with you continually, even when things aren't going well, I'm tired, I don't feel like it, I'm going to stay so close to you. I'm not going to let the world or sin or anything come in my relationship. I'm gonna, I want to produce fruit in my life. God begins to do some things in your life privately and publicly that only happen when you abide. I want to be more loving. I want to be more patient. I want to be more kind. That happens with that. And you, this is where we execute faith in our life, remaining and abiding. And so you might be here today, you're believing God for miracles and you haven't had it yet or you're praying and fasting, it hasn't come. This is this part of abiding, it's by faith. Listen to this. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you. Now watch, and I wait in expectation. I'm so close to the Lord, I'm abiding, but I can't control God. His timing is different. His ways are different than my ways. But by faith, we surrender ourselves. God, whatever you want to do in my life, cut off things, keep pruning me, keep working in me, Lord. Show me your ways, teach me your ways. I wait for you to your perfect plan because I want to keep close to the Lord. With all the things in the world that we don't understand, we need to stay close to the Lord. And so I want, I want to just encourage you. You're being here tonight online. Just keep being faithful. Finish this Daniel fast strong and then see what God does. But believe all year long. What, what, what's God going to do? I'm really excited. If God could do what he's done, what will he? But you don't get it unless you have faith and you just trust the Lord and say, God, I'm going to stay close to you. Now, maybe you don't have a personal relationship with God. You say, what does that even mean? You can know God? Yeah, you could do. You could know God. You open up your heart. You admit that Jesus is the Savior of the world. He's the creator. And we're sinners. You open up your heart to him and say, Jesus, save my soul. When Jesus died and rose again from the, de the dead, that's the access to God. And you can ask him in and say, Lord, I want to have a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. He's provided that. But you, all, you and I also have a responsibility to stay close to Jesus. Say, Lord, can I make this my most important thing in my life? To abide with you. Your word your spirit in my life. I want to be fruitful. I want to be like you, Lord. You know, the, the church, you hear this all the time. You're like, I'm not going to go to church because people are hypocrites. I, I kind of feel like, man, we're all hypocrites in some way, but Lord, I want to be more and more like Christ. So I'm not a distraction to you or your church. I want to be so in love with Jesus, people are attracted to something that's great in our life. And that only happens when we produce fruit in our life. More fruit, less flesh. So this is not to beat us up. This is just to encourage us. You probably are a little tired. You probably have had long days. It's still dark outside. It's been a long two or three years. I want to encourage you. Stay faithful. Believe God. Finish this Daniel fast strong. 
Believe God's going to work in this room, in the sanctuary, in the, the field house, and say, God, no matter what, in 2023, I'm going to stay close to you. You can determine that right now and say, God, this world is crazy. I know if I stay close to you and abide with you, I'll produce fruit in my life for your glory. Amen. You know what the other thing is, too? I've seen this. There's churches, the average church in America is still down 40 to 70% attendance. It's crazy. 40% of American pastors, I look at all the survey stuff, 40% of pastors would quit today if they could. Some guys are not ready to retire or whatever. What happens is, if you're not really, really zoned in to what the Lord wants to do, all of a sudden you start looking in the natural and discouragement will come in. There's something about being close to Jesus where he just gives you joy and peace and grace. The world is so messed up. It's so upside down. It's so convoluted. There is, there's no peace out there. And the Lord just begins to do. And the amount of fruit that's coming out of Marlton Assembly of God right now is incredible. And I just believe the Lord wants to continue to produce fruit from our church for his glory. But the only way it's going to happen is if we stay close to Jesus. If we stay close to Jesus, we'll be more fruitful. The moment we start thinking we've accomplished something, we step into the flesh and it kind of hurts. But if you and I will keep showing up and say, Lord, no matter what, I'm just going to stay close to you and believe God for his fruit in our life, man, great things can take place in your life and for us. Yeah, come on. We praise the Lord. Let's stand together. I know we've been, um, we've been at this altar. I just feel like we need to keep coming back around this altar and say, Lord, by faith, by faith, I want to be closer to you in my walk with the Lord this year. I, I want to not just finish this Daniel fast, but Lord, I want the fruit of the Spirit. I want to be close to you. And that's a commitment. God may be working. He might be trying to cut stuff out, but you're barely listening. Or he's maybe working on some things like unforgiveness or whatever, and you're just so distracted. And you're saying, you know what? Daniel fast gets me an opportunity to slow down. Just kind of think, okay, what, what's, what's really most important here? All right, let me get my head straight. I've heard a lot of people talk like this. I'm getting my head straight. Like, like their minds are a fog. Like there are a lot just going on. Say, Lord, I just need you to really help me to be like zeroed in. Say, God, would you just touch my heart? I'm available to you. I, I want what you want in my life for your glory, for your honor. I believe we just got to keep surrendering that to the Lord and keep trusting and see what God wants to do in our life. He could do it in your life. He could do it in your marriage. He could do it in your kids. You could do it in the church. You could do it up in North Jersey. You could do it in South Jersey, Camden, Philly. You say, God, what do you want? Just help me to produce fruit. And God has a way of taking care of the rest. It's just humbly kind of submitting ourselves to the Lord. So can we just maybe play a little bit, not sing too loud? But what I'm going to invite us, and we'll get you out of here at 8 o'clock. By the way, moms and dads, we now have kids ministry. Nursery's open to my right, to your left, and kids down the hall. So we thank God for that. It's been a little while. It's been a grind. But we're going to come around this altar in the next five to seven minutes. And let's not sing too much. Let's just play for a minute. But would you come and say, Lord, would you help me bear fruit in my life and cut out anything or prune anything in my life so I could be more fruitful in 2023? Would you just come around the altar? If you want to sit, just find a place to sit and just engage. Let God speak to our hearts and speak to our lives. We're available to him. Jesus, we love you, Lord. Jesus, we love you, Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus.
I didn't ask anybody to do this, but I wonder if there's one or two people that would just be bold enough just to pray a prayer like this, just where you're at in the seats or you're standing at the altar. Say, Lord, I want to be effective for you. I want to produce fruit for you. I want to be used by you. God, I'm available for you. I wonder if there could be one or two people just from your heart. You would pray on behalf of yourself, maybe even on the congregation. Say, God, we're here tonight to bear fruit. We want to be used by you. We want to advance the kingdom of God. Lord, we're here around this altar, and we're believing you for great things. I wonder if one or two people would just let faith rise in your heart, in your voice, and just pray out loud, and we would agree with you, but just do it loud enough so if someone's listening online, we could just gear our hearts to say, Lord, this is what we're trying to do for your glory and for your honor. Would there be a couple of people that just lift up your voice and pray out loud? We'll agree with you in prayer. One more person, same type of spirit, just asking God to do a work in our life this year. For those watching online, there's public prayers. Can I have just maybe one more person? Just lift up your voice. It's good to, when we pray together, it does something in our hearts and our minds and our faith. One more person, just lift up your voice in prayer. I think, I think there's a word in there of just keeping our eyes on the Lord, but he did, my brother did say that he's struggling. Right? Can, a couple, can a couple men just come and put their hand on his shoulder? We need to encourage my brother. Lord, maybe I'll just extend out our hand. Lord, I pray for my friend who's struggling tonight. We all struggle at times in our life, but Lord, we come to an altar because we need breakthroughs. We need a touch from the Lord, and I pray just for encourage right now. I pray for anybody in this room or online that's hurting, going through some things, some deep dark, darkness of their soul right now. I pray, God, you would lift us up and you would encourage us. Oh, God, we call on your name. Lord, I pray, God, for a divine intervention for this young man. I pray for everybody, Lord, who needs a touch from you. Oh, God, we build our lives on Jesus. Lord, we follow Jesus. We abide with Jesus. God, we call on your name. I pray you would carry us along, strengthen us. Help us to finish strong. Help us, Lord God, to move by the Holy Spirit this year. God, touch our church. Touch this community. Bless us in Jesus' name. Oh, God, we build our life. Come on, let's sing it together. Let's trust him together.
You know what we're going to do? We're going to do a couple more things real quick. Um, by the way, we, uh, on Wednesday nights, we're trying not to take an offering, but there are offering buckets before you leave and then always online or in the bucket. That's the best thing. But we're going to do, we're kind of like, this is our first prayer service. We're just going to lift the volume. No singing. We're just going to lift it almost just a little uncomfortable, Steve. Just lift. And we're just going to begin to praise the Lord and bless his name. We never walk out with a sense that we don't have victory. No matter, even if you keep praying, you never give Satan an opportunity to speak negative in our life. We're just going to begin to praise him and to thank him for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. And then, Brendan, you're going to come and in, in a moment, and you're going to close us with a word of prayer. Come on, let's just begin to praise him and to thank him. Oh, God, we praise you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We magnify your name. We exalt you, oh God. There's none that compares to you. You're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, we bless you, Lord. You're worthy of our praise. You're our creator. God, in you we live and move and have our being. Oh, Lord, we bless your name. We exalt you in this house. Lord, we're trusting you all this year. What you're going to do in our lives. How you're going to take us to the next step and produce fruit that will honor you and to bless your life. Oh, we exalt you, oh Lord. We worship you, Lord. We praise you. You inhabit the praises of your people. Oh Lord, we exalt your name, oh God. We exalt your name. We exalt your name. Amen. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. Amen. Amen. The Lord's faithful. Let me just say this. Let me just pass to you for a moment. I believe sometimes in this moment, the next five minutes, Satan can come and just disrupt you. You walk out of here and you almost kind of walk out and you say, like, no, I didn't talk to anybody. The next five minutes could be as important as the last hour. The relationship that people have when they talk to one another, they encourage one another. And sometimes we go to the people that we know the most. Our church has a new, lot of new people. Would you just think about maybe just finding people you've never met before? Say, hey, I'm, I'm John. I, I, this is how I do it. Are you, are you new here? It's always embarrassing. They say, Pastor, I've been coming three years. I'm sorry. I just didn't know that it happens more times than you think. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what service do you go to? I'm sorry. But you say, hey, are you, uh, I, I, I have not talked to you. And just introduce yourself. And then the, ask the next question, how did you hear about Marlton? Some people have different experiences. And all of a sudden, you could be a blessing in somebody's life. If you always go to your own kind, that's easy to do. But if you find somebody that maybe needs encouragement, hey, I've never met you before, I, you build a relationship. I can't tell me when people come to church and they're lonely, they just feel like they sit lonely, and they don't know each other. Maybe just get to know new people as we come in a new year, let God do a great work in your life. Brendy closes down. We're proud of this young guy. He got married like two weeks ago. Come on. <laughs> just keep talking about it. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious toward you. The Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have God, a great evening. God Don't bless you. God volleyball. bless you. Hey, thanks for being at our first United Prayer Service of the new year. It's really exciting that we get to just spend this time together praying, calling after God, believing for miracles, building friendships. Just there's so many things that happen when we're in prayer together. So we can't say anything, but thanks for investing intentionally in your spiritual life. We hope that you join us every Wednesday night, starting at 6.30 for pre-service prayer, 7 o'clock for prayer. Thanks for being here, and we can't wait to see you this Sunday, either at Marlton at 9 or 10.45 in person or online, or 4 o'clock at Valesburg in person. See you later.